we will lose him because he's going full time into the ministry. Otherwise, thanks for listening to us. We've been in the business of robotics since 2017, and we have about 20 staff members full time. When we do activities, then we end up with many other people. And we are doing robots for free state government. So all the robotics programs that are run for free state government, if your child participates in that, we are responsible for that robotics program. We are doing the Northern Cape uh, robotics since 2018. No, not 2018, 2020, just before COVID. That's when we signed the Northern Cape government. We just signed the Eastern Cape government. In fact, we just finished 100 educators. We trained them about two weeks ago. We are training the people in Tata. So we have Eastern Cape government. In fact, yesterday, we were in KZN, and we hope we will do a robotics program for Eastern Cape, uh, KZN government. So those are the four government departments that you, of education that we are doing work for. We do work in Gauteng, but not necessarily with government. We do work in Limpopo, not necessarily with government. So you'll find us in many other activities, but these four are the ones that we signed partnership with government. So we train the educators. You guys may be aware that robotics are also now becoming part of curriculum in schools. In fact, by 2025, all schools will be doing robotics curriculum. So we are the people responsible for training the, the people there. Uh, in DHET, higher education, there's a concept called world skills. It's where countries go and compete in terms of skills. So we are appointed by higher education to do the, like we're the experts for, the, for all the TVET colleges who go and compete in the world skills. We were in France last October and out of 64 countries, we are number 18, and I hope it's not the best yet. We will want to be up higher. So we are going back to France in 2024. So we hope to bring even we want a medal, in fact. We are 20 points away from a medal. It was our first time to participate. So we are looking forward to bringing a medal for the, for the country. I already mentioned that we are in TVET colleges. So we go as far as the Palale, those who know the Limpopo. We go as far as uh, Invenda, the Tivet College Day. We also supporting them. And uh, yeah, those are the things that we do. Already it was mentioned that we have international partners. We work largely with the Koreans, although we work with the company in, the, in Canada that was chosen by government. So we're also in in, in that space where we work with some of the international partners. We are in Botswana. We opened an office as a company now in Botswana. Uh, Dr. Mukhwas, Dr. Ndadepak, we have opened an office in Botswana. We have eight engineers that work for us full time in Botswana at a school called Rainbow. Those who are from Botswana will know where Rainbow School is. And in May, we are getting the second school in Francis Town, so we are in there. We, 2021, last year, 2022, last year, this time of the year, we opened an office in Tanzania, and fortunately there we partnered with an Adventist person who's our partner in Tanzania. We opened an office in August in Zambia, unfortunately it's not an Adventist, but it was a friend that we knew from, from university. Even the guys in Botswana, they are not, unfortunately, they are not Adventist. We met through universities. While I'm presenting also, I must say, these two guys here, I wasn't told what they are building, but they will build some of things and come and demonstrate to us what they are, what they are building, and I hope they will tell us. I don't know what is prepared or what they are preparing there for, for us. As I mentioned earlier, we supported a few churches. If you invite us as a church, we come and do a full day event for your, for your education or a Python day or whatever day that you'll call and want us to come to your, to your church. We do come and we do the whole program and it's quite nice for the for adventurers, even but for Pathfinders too, we do that for them. So in KZN, we work with uh, Brother Sile Kunene, I think some of you 
know him. The people in the Cape, I know he's just done a program the, in, the, in the Cape. So we're working with, uh, with him. We support all the skill set that he needs. Anybody who attended our virtual classes during 2021, 20, during COVID? Oh, well done. At least now some souls have... Okay, this is me. Yes, I know you didn't... <laughs> Yes, I know you didn't see me during the very well during the virtual classes. So we do run also virtual classes on, on Sundays and we supply equipment to churches so that the kids are able to try and understand what is this robotics uh, program about. We do all the schools in the Northern Conference from Pretoria up to Sidaven. I know Sidaven is a popular one. All the Adventist schools under the Northern Conference, we run education program during the week. We basically train all the learners. If your, your child is in, uh, in one of those Adventist schools in the Northern Conference, you must have seen me because I've been to parents' meetings. So we are the ones who are responsible for that. In the TUC, we do Orlando West School in Gauteng. It's one of the schools that we support with the robotics program. And 50% of our employees are Adventists. In fact, where we run Adventist program, we only bring Adventist employees. You know, things like smoking, alcohol, we try not to bring that influence. So for, if you run your school, we bring an Adventist school uh, uh, employees into your environment. In fact, I know we've had discussions with uh, Good Hope. Is it Good Hope, Tibello? Yes. I know Tibello went and we had a discussion with uh, Good Hope. And soon we should be starting, we'll start with Good Hope and then extend to all the schools in the, in the Cape Conference. And we should be able to start supporting your, your school. The purpose for this presentation is basically to say, we'd like to partner with the church and to support you to standardize robotics. The reason I was giving the previous slide is simply to say we have an experience in this. We are not just doing it because the church wants to do it. It's something that on a daily basis we go and do. We train professionals in the country. We train educators in the country. We participate internationally in this kind of competition. So when we bring it to the church, we bring a, a, a vast amount of knowledge and a vast amount of, of experience. We really know what we, are, what we are doing. So when we come and say we're going to do a program for you, we've aligned everything according to the curriculum. And I'll talk about this Okay, we know the reason why we have honors in church. So you guys are sorted to say why we have honors. But what is it that is special about robotics honor? How many of us have robots at home? Don't worry, you'll attend my workshop and we'll discover that we have robots at home. It's just that we didn't understand and see them as, as robots. So... Robotics is basically part of engineering and science. It has to do with the creation and building of robots as well as computer programming. You know, when I was listening, when people were presenting here, saying whether you are a pathfinder, whether you are an adventurer, whether you are an ambassador, you want creativity. Any program that has not made us participate is boring. And this is one element that will be able to bring creativity and assist you in your programs. For instance, if, for instance, in the building class, for instance, as the builders, and we are building, and let's say we're building houses, with us, we'll make that house have electricity, we'll make that house be smart. You'll be able to instruct that house and talk to the house. Those are the things that we bring. The same thing that you used to do, we just bring smartness to it. So, if we used to build cars, I don't know if they'll demonstrate a car here, We'll bring a car, but you'll run your car with your cell phone. This car will be able to have sounds and things like that, unlike what we normally would have done. Have a car that speaks, or you speak into the car, but this car is not responding back to you. So what we do is like, the same activities that we used to do in, the, in our classes, we just bring smart and make them better and make them nicer, and the kids then are interested in those, uh, in those things. So the nice part about it, we talked about careers here. Why we do this honors? They must also influence the kind of careers that we choose. This career of robotics or this honor 
is a multidisciplinary career. It works within engineering, it works within IT, it works within the whole mathematical sciences space. In the computer science, those who want to be programmers and stuff like that, it works in those, in those spaces. So your learners also when they finish, they don't just hear these things only from school, but they also hear them from, from church. And we influence them in terms of career and choices that they, career choices that they will, they will make. So if in your house you have anything that is automated, come and talk to us. That is form of a robot that you, you have. One thing that the church has done very well, it's Pathfinder's play. I was talking to Pastor Rambau. I haven't seen him today oh, because I only came in. The, oh. I was talking to, to Pastor Rambau sometime, probably a month ago, since we last, uh, we last talked. All of us here have been to a movie. In fact, the lady was saying, bring movies and then we have interest. Why is it that you remember everything that you, from the movie that you went to watch? Have, have you seen that? You go to a movie, you enjoy everything. Most of the time, if we went to church, you remember what was preached, except those of us who have lay activity during services. If you don't sleep, you ordinarily will remember. But what we normally say on that is, you know, everything that you volunteer to do, your, your receptiveness is much higher. That's why you remember. When you went to the movie, you volunteered to be at the movie. That's why you receive, but it's also interactive. Then you remember everything that was done in the movie. When you go to, to church, if you really, it's where you wanted to be that Sabbath, you remember everything that the pastor said. That's why the kids, when you say, when they, those who are teachers, when anyway, all of you that did it anyway at school, when the bell rings, you run. When the bell rings the other way, you don't run. You enjoy being there. So if they can educate you, they teach you there, you'll be receptive to education. But because they teach you where you don't want to be, you don't receive it. So we need to find a way of making our Pathfinder be what, where kids want to be. And I remember I said to Pastor Ramba, I'll refer to him again because I mentioned this to say, if there's one program that is successful in church, it's Pathfinder. It doesn't matter where you place your Pathfinder camp, the kids are going to come. We need to start asking ourselves to say, why do we have problems with all the other programs? Uh, Elder Toto, Cape Town, was sitting, or oh, he just went out. Stasa has problems with inviting people because they say, no, if it's not coastal, they, or even the ambassador groups, if it's not the senior youth, if it's not coastal, people don't want to come. It's programs. If Pathfinder is successful on programs, I also made examples with women's ministries. Women ministries used to come here in Bloemfontein for many, many years. And every year when they do that program, it was full. When we have a program that is interesting to people, they will come. So our challenge is creating programs that kids are interested in. So kids want to play, they play with their, with their peers. And if they play with their peers, they spend more time. That's where the passion comes from. They become passionate about it. And later they realize that they were just basically doing a project and will get excellence out of it. And this is how the ministry is designed. AY is an age group classification. We do things that are classified there. So it's the same thing that we do in robotics. We have robots that are age classified, equivalent to the ages that the kids are in. We go to the Pathfinder, we go to ambassadors, we go to, to young adults. All these programs will be able to run. So we run multiple tournaments, the way we'll divide. The same way when you go to the Campori or Pathfinder Fair, we'll be able to have a, a, a robotics owner. But in the robotics owner, you come and perform. The same way when we drill, when you go to a camp. You'll come there with your robots, with your coding, with your laptops, and be able to show us what we are able to do. Be able to come and say, we'll be able to put a car on this uh, track here. This car will self-drive, and I think they're going to make it load something. I don't know what they prepared. I haven't met them. But through this robotic owner, the kids will be able to be prepared from home. And when they come to, to the camp, be able to also demonstrate the learnings that they've achieved throughout the, the time. 
So we have multiple classes that we, we have. One of the things that we've been encouraging with the robotics owner, and I know we still need to talk with Pastor Joseph and the team, we really want to start sending our kids to compete overseas. You know, you'll see when you read the North American division, you can go and look at it. They've already been doing this since 2016. When we are talking about it today, we are almost, what, eight years behind them? So it shows you how far. It also shows you how far we are in terms of career influence in church. That they've already been influencing their kids since 2016. And we are still now talking about doing it in our church. So that means we don't have to talk about it. We have to jump and run in, in doing it. So my commitment to, to the church a winner, a group, because we can't take the whole team. A church that will win in the campery in robotics will pay all expenses for them to go. That's what we, we are offering. You know, as an Adventist, you must always finish with a, a spirit of prophecy. Otherwise, because you see, we didn't do a verse. The test that people will know every time we come. When, when we close the Sabbath, then that's Q&A. And the, the first question was like, you guys never said anything about the Bible. So we now learned that when you talk these technologies, you must also talk about the Bible. Ellen G. White, Ellen G. White writes in the in the ceiling, in early writings, the very third vision, there is a perfect order and harmony in the holy city. All angels that are commissioned to visit the earth hold a golden cart, which they present to the angels at the gates of the city as they pass in and out. Now listen to this. When did we start having carts for access? Probably around 80s, those who were there, but largely around 19... Uh, in the, around 2000, that's when you start seeing people really, in fact, mostly probably 2005, that's when cars were really being used to have access to building, LN, buildings and LA, or complexes. And Ellen G. White says already in 1849, already in heaven, there were golden carts that were being used for access for in and out. And she says further, when I got out of the vision, then I was disappointed. Then I said to, to my angel, let me get the thought that I want to, to present. Or she says, some of the things that I saw, I could not describe them. And I want that part to say, what is it that she could not describe? Were there drones in heaven? Were there robots? Because in 1849, when there were no access cards to us, she saw angels presenting access cards. So if she, God allowed her to see further, what is it that she was going to show us that's available in heaven? I'm willing, okay. Let me allow them to demonstrate. Kibello will demonstrate quickly. Five more minutes. We'll take just five more minutes. I'll ask Tibello to demonstrate a few things. Okay, while they are finishing, let me demonstrate this man here. I can put my... Okay, I'll talk. No, it's fine. All of us can see through, through that. So he's just simply putting him on. Put him on the white. So he's greeting you.
Oh, that's what technology will do to you. <laughs> okay, he was supposed to do a headstand. I'm not sure why he, he stopped there. But basically, a robot like this one, the kids will build it. <laughs> okay. It's Goliath. <laughs> yes, the kids will build this kind of thing. This will be the, like, modern ambassadors kind of age group. They will build this, and then we teach them how to program it, basically to give it the instructions. And from the instructions, they will then compete if they are able to do fully what they were supposed to, to do. Okay, let's see if he's able to repeat. Yes. <laughs> Let's allow the, the little guys. Okay, basically what happens here is the components will come in boxes with an instruction manual. The instruction manual can either be on the phone or as a book. But because uh, new things are always developed, the one in the cell phone is better because it gets updated faster than the book will do. So uh, this is Pastor Dichabe's children. And one did a windmill. And the other one did a... <laughs> okay. Melo, demonstrate. Okay, what they basically did, they built that and connected it to the app that is on the, on the cell phone and it's able to, to then move. And let's see with the little brother. Then the little brother did a windmill and I don't know if he, can you blow into your windmill? Can you try and blow into the windmill? Okay, let me see. No, no. What normally could happen, because sometimes it depends on the phone that the person is using. When I blow into your charger socket, the windmill will turn, all right? So I, I'm not sure of the device, so. Apologies, <laughs> but it's something that can be, can be done. When we sit and the kids then come and compete, those are some of the activities that we'll ask them to, to do. And <clears throat> let's come and do it here. And I want to demonstrate this here if it will work. You know, I always say 